things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, each week we gather in this holy place on the day of the Lord's resurrection to celebrate our baptismal journey in Christ. Today, these parents have asked to have their child to be received into the Catholic Church through the sacrament of baptism. On behalf of all of us here at Most Blessed Sacrament Parish, I wish to extend a warm greeting to you. I would like to remind you of the joy with which you have welcomed your child as a gift from God, the source of all life, who now wishes to bestow his own life on your own child. And so, parents, what name have you given your child? Maxwell Joseph. Joseph. And what do you ask of God's church for your child? Baptism. Baptism. You have asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of our faith. It will be your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Parents, do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? And to our godparents, are you ready to assist these parents in their duties as Christian parents? Maxwell Joseph, the Christian community welcomes you today with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of His cross. I now trace that cross on your forehead, and then I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. And we now enter into God's church with great joy as we sing our gathering song found in your worship aid. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ, our salvation and our hope. Let us bow in homage to the Lord of life, who was broken to make us whole. There is no greater love, as blessed as this, to lay down one's life for a friend. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ and the triumph of God's great love. Let us ever glory to the cross of Christ who is risen from the grave. He will come in glory to receive our hearts at the dawn of the lasting day. For the trumpet will sound, the dead shall be raised, and death shall defeat us no more. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ and the triumph of God's great love. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that He has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed uh, renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we've received 
and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, Glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit. So the rejoicing now and the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had killed him by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of his name. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. 
Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast a net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to them, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord.
There's only one thing that will completely fill our emptiness, and that, of course, is Jesus. In the gospel we just heard, the boat was empty, so to speak. Something was missing. They had set out, but they had set out with Jesus. Jesus was not with them in the boat. And isn't that sometimes the case for us as well? Sometimes Jesus isn't in the boat with us. We want to trust in ourselves. That's our human tendency. I want to do it my way. And we don't want to completely rely on God. And yet at the same time, really deep down inside ourselves, we really do want to rely on God. We want to know that someone else is in charge, that all these wayward paths that we're on in this life are all reaching the same goal. But we do get confused along the way. And so what do we do as humans? We, we turn to what we're comfortable with. And that's exactly what those apostles did in our gospel tonight. They kind of go back to their old way, their way before Jesus. They go fishing. But again, I'll preface it, they're fishing without the Lord. And so, of course, they do not catch anything at all. Sometimes God allows our best laid plans to come crashing down all around us. Now, God doesn't do this to torture us, but he's permitting it to teach us to trust more in him. And so we see the embarrassment and maybe frustration of these apostles, these fishermen, that might be pretty embarrassing. You know, fishermen tend to be pretty proud of their, their skill. And uh, when they're skunked, they're humiliated, let's say, that when they come up empty with nothing in the nets or on the line. And then to make matters worse, now they hadn't recognized the man on the shore yet, it was Jesus, but to make matters worse, Jesus shows up on the shore and he, he calls out and asks them if they've caught anything. It's probably the worst thing you can ask a fisherman after a long day of, or night of fishing and coming up empty. It's like rubbing salt in the wound, so to speak. And so you can sort of imagine maybe the way they kind of growled back at this man on the shoreline in their response. No, we haven't caught anything. And probably in their minds, maybe they were also thinking, and mind your own business. But those apostles, they needed to recognize their own weaknesses. They needed to vocalize their own inability to do anything at all without our Lord. And when they do that, he does act. He fills the boat with 153 types of fish. Now that's a rather strange number, isn't it? You know, you'd think it would be 400 or, you know, one of those nice sacred numbers you find in the Bible. 153? Where in the world did that come from? Well, St. Jerome, way back in the 300s, gives us a probable explanation. You see, in the world of Jesus, Greek zoology had recognized that there were a total of 153 different kinds of fish in the ancient world at that time. In other words, it represented all of the fish in the ocean. So that number 
represents the fullness of the church. But it also represents the fullness of our own lives as well. Lives that we are being asked to give over to Jesus Christ. And only he alone can fill the emptiness with his friendship. And that's something that we have to keep working on is our friendship with the Lord. Our relationship with him. Now when we feel empty, our tendency is to kind of close in on ourselves. But that's always a huge mistake when we do that. And just like the apostles were tempted to always return to our comfort zones, so to speak. Theirs was fishing. What is yours? What is mine? We all have our own comfort zones. For some it might be food, others it's shopping. Maybe it's ESPN, maybe it's wine. We're all familiar with them all, our comfort zones. Now they're good things in small doses. But if we keep turning to them over and over and over again to fill us, they will leave us empty. So what is the best way to break out of these doldrums, so to speak? Well, it's simple. We simply give of ourselves to others. That way we can break out of our protective shell and give of ourselves. So how do we do that? Well, there's about as many ways as there are people here. Here's a few suggestions. Let's pick one of these or something else that maybe comes to mind in our liturgy this afternoon and let's work on it this week. Just one of these. Maybe visit somebody who's been alone or at least give them a phone call. Or invite a friend to come to church with you. Or say a very special prayer for someone who has been suffering a lot lately. Or resolve to do three kind acts for your spouse each day or for your siblings if you don't have a spouse. Three kind acts. Right now we're approaching the very middle of our Easter season and Jesus wants us to continue to be filled with his joy, with his mercy, with his great love and presence in our lives. As we serve him and others, we will begin to experience that joy more and more. It really works. And so when we come forward today to receive our Lord in this most blessed sacrament, the Eucharist, we ask him to help us to give ourselves to others. And that means we have to trust him. And that's really what it's all about, trusting in Jesus. He alone can fill us when we are empty. In a few moments, Maxwell Joseph, who sort of has an empty boat right now, is about to be baptized. And our Lord's going to climb aboard, but Maxwell Joseph's going to need lots of other help as well, from mom and dad, from family and friends, all of us here praying and being good Christian examples to him. And so it's with great joy that we will now enter into this baptismal liturgy. Please rise. My dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listens to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. Our response is, Christ our life, 
save us. Christ our life, save us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all pastors, may we join them as disciples of Jesus in serving the poor, sick, and dying, and sharing the good news, we pray. Christ, our life, save us. For all civil leaders, that in this holy year of mercy, we may seek ways to follow Jesus' invitation to feed my sheep, we pray. Christ, our life, save us. For our faith community, May the joy of Easter inspire our efforts at our upcoming parish summit, we pray. Christ our life, save us. For those who are preparing for the Sacrament of Confirmation next Sunday, and for the catechists, sponsors, and families, may the Holy Spirit guide and sustain them, we pray. Christ our life, save us. For Maxwell Joseph Folly, who was baptized this weekend, and for all of the newly baptized, May they grow in their love for Jesus with the support of their godparents and families, we pray. Christ our life, save us. For the living and deceased members of Most Blessed Sacrament Parish, for intentions in our prayer books and on our prayer line, and for our own personal intentions, we pray. Christ our life, save us. For Kathleen Tekla and Mary Zwetler, who have gone before us marked the sign of faith, and for all those who have died. In particular, we remember Violet Nelson, Leon Stuber, and Bud and Lucille Crone. May they share in the joy of the resurrection, we pray. Christ, Christ our life, save, save us. And now with the prayers of the saints to intercede for us. As I come down, I'm going to lead the family over to the font here. And let us now pray together for this family and especially for this child to be about to be baptized as we now will be singing the litany of the saints. Lord have mercy, mercy. Christ have mercy, mercy. Lord have mercy, mercy. Holy Mary Mother of God, Pray for us, holy angels of God. Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us. Saint Andrew. St. John, pray for us. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. St. Stephen, pray for us. St. Ignatius, pray for us. St. Lawrence, pray for us. St. Perpetual and St. Felicity, Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. Saint Claire, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth. O holy men and women, pray for us. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, spirit of evil, and to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness and bring him into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for this child. Set him free from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory and send your Holy Spirit to dwell with him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation, you can be seated for the moment. My dear child, we now anoint you with the oil of salvation. In the name of Christ our Savior, may he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I gotta do this. 
loosen it up. There you go. Stand back here. My dear brothers and sisters, God uses the sacrament of water to give his divine life to those who believe in him. Let us turn to him and ask him to pour his gift of life from this font onto this child who he has chosen. And your response will be, blessed be God, blessed, blessed be God. God. Father, God of mercy, through these waters of baptism, you have filled us with new life as your very own children. Blessed, blessed be, be God. God. From all who are baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, you have formed one people united in your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, you have set us free and filled our hearts with the spirit of your love that we may live in your peace. Blessed be God, you call those who have been baptized to announce the good news of Jesus Christ to people everywhere. Blessed be God. You have called your child, Maxwell Joseph, to this cleansing water that he may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, lead him to a new and spiritual birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, he is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of our faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, I ask you to renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin, profess your faith in Jesus Christ, for this is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which your child is about to be baptized. And so parents and godparents, please respond, I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Congregation, please rise. And now together I invite you with the parents and godparents to make a profession of faith. And so do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Congregation, you can be seated again. One last question to our parents and godparents. Is it your will that Maxwell Joseph should be baptized in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? All right, you can just step back. Let's see. The best way to do this is for you guys to come up this way and kind of face out. And we'll get Maxwell Joseph's head over the font. Can maybe uh, you can come over this way. There you go. Godparents are close. You got a good. Can you see everything? <laughs> Who's got cameras? Why are you way over there? Come over here. <laughs> Don't be shy. Come on. All right. This is the big moment. There's no retakes. There's no reruns. Okay. <laughs> no instant replay. And you can put his head just a little lower. Maxwell Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oops, you moved. <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, you can wipe his face. There you go. Well, you're used to all that water in your eyes, I'm sure. Nine months of it, I know. <laughs> there you go. And we can step back out here again if you want.
And God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Chrism. Now don't move this time. There we go. There you're going to smell pretty for a while. And so will I. <laughs> Maxwell Joseph, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment that you are wearing the outward sign of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help you by word and example bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Now comes the easiest job of all. Tallest godparent. <laughs> See that big candle over there? I think I can help you though. You're tall enough, you might be able to. Oh, look at that. This is a record, I think. <laughs> you got it. And come down and stand next to your godchild. <clears throat> Maxwell Joseph received the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart, and when the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Well, we now have a new Christian in our midst. Let's congratulate this family and Maxwell Joseph. <laughs> Pull that out. And we do have a few things we can give you. We'll give you a box to put the candle in, first of all. Sort of like a birthday candle. We always give you some of the baptismal water because it's now holy water. Good stuff to always have at home. So we'll let you get, take that one. And all kinds of gifts here. <laughs> a Bible and a certificate. And we also give a little book here. And inside of it, we've recorded the special occasion. And it's a wonderful book to read to him or have him read once he gets old enough. But it's, I've learned a few things out of it myself, so don't be afraid to read it yourselves as well. Okay? God bless you. And you can go back to your pews now, and we'll continue now with the offertory. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Alleluia. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We'll be using the second Eucharistic prayer, not the one found in your worship aid. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Please be seated. <coughs> Pray to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all his spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Put kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.